Meet Pippin. This was my team's bot for the 2019 Mark Leon Invitational Signature Event in Honolulu, Hawaii. Pippin wasn't the first bot we made this year, but it ended up replacing all of our other bots. We had developed some more ambitious designs, but we weren't able to dial them in as much as we wanted to. And thus, Pippin was born, being made in the final three days before shipping out. This isn't the most competitive bot, it's not going to win worlds, but it does show some neat techniques and designs that may be useful, both this year and in future years. I'm Caden here with Kepler Electronics, and let's dive in. Pippin was conceived as a simple bot that prioritized simplicity and maneuverability over high stacks and flair. For this reason, we built a cut-down chassis at 25 by 25 holes. This proved to be quite nice, as the bot is able to squeeze through tight spaces and avoid knocking over cubes. The cut-down length proved to perhaps have been a mistake, as the robot proved to be quite tippy when the lift was raised all the way. To further aid in the low profile of the bot, the wheels chosen were 3.25 inch Omni wheels. Omni wheels aid in turning, and I wanted the bot to be as maneuverable as possible. The wheels peeking out the sides of the chassis was a feature we use in our turning point robots, and I still quite like it. They allow you to easily climb over obstacles, along with the potential for the wheels to still be touching the ground after a tip. Going over to the lift, we ended up going with a 6 bar design. The 6 bar design was chosen because of its simplicity, and the fact that we thought we'd be able to build a quality 6 bar in the 3 days before the event. This lift is quite the standard 6 bar, made of aluminum C-channel, connected with a common bearing and screw joint for low slop and low friction. The 6 bar is high enough to stack in any but the tallest tower, and get a stack of 5, maybe 6 cubes high. Since it is a 6 bar lift, it doesn't go straight up and down, but rather out and up, or out and down, which makes stacking a bit more difficult, but it isn't a huge problem. We originally powered the lift with two 200 RPM motors geared 5 to 3, but that was too weak to lift anything. We ended up switching over to 200 RPM motors geared 5 to 1. There's probably a happy medium in between those two ratios, as this lift is much more powerful than it needed to be. One interesting thing about the lift is the method of which we attached it to the chassis. To avoid using an angled bar as a support, as they can be quite tricky to attach, and the aim of the bot was ease and speed of construction, we ended up building this, a mess of C-channel and L-beams. This method starts by using these 90 degree gussets to hold the towers in place. This isn't by any means a strong method of connecting them, which is why we reinforced them a lot. The outer tower has this L-channel piece that braces it against the frame of the bot, and both towers have these L-beams that brace them against one of the cross beams on the chassis for added rigidity. This is an extremely secure mounting method, and I feel super confident in the strength of this mounting solution. Mounted to the lift is a claw. This claw is about as low profile of a claw as I can imagine, and it grips the cubes with ease, grabbing and holding them on the flat side. The claw is powered by a 100 RPM motor, which got incredibly hot. Last year on our double flywheel bot, we managed to go over temperature level 3 on the flywheel motors. Same on our catapult robot with the motor on the launcher. The claw motor will consistently run over temperature level 4. At temperature level 4, rather than the reduced speed and sluggish movement of level 3, there is no movement, and you could be tricked into thinking that the motor's not even plugged in. This overheating issue may be a result of the RPM, it may be an issue in programming, but it is usable, and we were able to make it through the whole competition without compressed air, except a bit that we borrowed from our alliance partner. One pretty awesome thing about this robot is that it has a way to self-write if it gets flipped over. Often called a SRIMAC, or self-writing mechanism, this is a common trait in combat robotics, where flipping is quite common. This robot, since it has that cut-down chassis, has that tendency to tip over. If it lands on its face, it can self ride by bringing the lift down and driving forward. This works because the lift swings outward and isn't something that all lift types can do. This came in handy quite often in our matches at Mark Leon, as I had not practiced enough to completely mitigate tipping. You may have been wondering, what are the wheels on the back for? This is another way to mitigate against tipping. If we get tipped backwards, our method of using our lift to self right won't work, but since our wheels in the back protrude from the end of the chassis, we can effectively use two-wheel drive to get around and play defense. We can even use our lift to extend and block other robots as a sort of makeshift wall bot. On a side note, I totally messed up driving here in the competition and tipped over, but ended up tipping into the tower and knocking the cube out. Since I have a bit more time, here's a montage of some of my favorite moments from our matches at the Mark Leon Invitational Tournament. Go!
one interesting strategy at the tournament proved to be defense. Now, maybe I just suck at driving, which is totally plausible, but when being defended, it was nearly impossible to score towers. This seemed to be true on the flip side as well, as defending other teams made it extremely difficult for them to score towers. Pippin isn't a very competitive bot. It's great at defense and can take a lot of abuse, but it did not have the stacking abilities needed to be a top tier competitor. It was super fun to drive, and some of the most intense matches I've ever seen came when playing defense with this bot. Pushing around other bots was super fun, and being able to self-right was amazing and something I don't think any other bot could do at the Mark Leon. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe, there's a lot more Vex content coming. If you're interested in combat robotics, be sure to check out my videos on Blast Wave, my one pound combat robot made using 3D printing. Thanks again for watching, and keep designing.